Hello everyone, Darcy Bono here. If this image disturbs you, then I'm doing something right. These are some bases that I made for an upcoming Nurgle Force, though you could certainly use them for corn or pretty much anything chaosy, and they are incredibly easy to make. We're going to look at a couple different versions, starting with a more cracked, dry skin tone with kind of like bloody underlayers, and then we're going to move on to the fully kind of open sores that you see here. So without much further ado, let's get started. We're going to start by whipping up a blood recipe using Flesh Terror's Red Contrast Paint. I use about two drops of this, as well as a little bit of Saigor Brown to give it a more realistic blood color, as blood is somewhat brown. We are then going to add just a single drop of Flow Improver, though any type of medium that you use to thin your paints will work just fine for this. We just want this to flow smoothly and not get a little too clotted, pun intended, uh, and then mix it up and you'll see that it turns into a nice brown red instead of the bright, vibrant Flesh Terrors red. And you can adjust this depending on how you want your blood to look. Um, if you want it more fresh, then put more Flesh Terrors red. If you want it more dried looking blood, put more Saigor brown. And as you would with any contrast paint situation, you're gonna wanna start with a light primed base. This is uh, Corax white, but Wraithbone or Gracier will work just fine. You just wanna make sure that it is a light base. And then all you do is just spread your blood mixture all over it until you have a nice bloody foundation. Something that you can do that is optional is to sponge the base. As you can see here, this will give it a more stippled texture surface to it. Um, it's again, completely optional, but it adds a little bit of color variation with very minimal effort. Once your base has completely dried, we're going to be applying a gloss varnish to this. This is Citadel's Art Coat, but any gloss varnish you prefer will work. We're doing this in order to protect this foundation layer for future steps that we're going to do. And in addition, this will make it a lot easier to create the kind of open sore effect. Uh, we're going to be applying a ghrelin earth after this. That's a technical paint that cracks, and we want to be able to pull that up and off of this red so the red will show through, but we don't want the red pulling up with the crust we're going to be pulling off. And I say this out loud and it sounds truly gross, uh, but that, that's why we're doing this heavy gloss varnish. In this next step, we're going to be using Citadel's Agrelin Earth, that is a technical cracking paint, and we're just going to be spreading it all over our nice glossy base. As you can see here, it is a very thick paint, so I recommend using either an old brush or a spatula or any kind of spreading device that you would use for, <laughs> for like icing. Uh, so the way this paint works, if you haven't used it before, is the more you put on the more dense the cracks are gonna be, like the more um, deep and obvious they will be. If you put it on too thin, it's not gonna crack enough for you to pull it up later, which is fine if you don't wanna do the um, open wound look, if you just wanna have that kind of gross dry skin red underneath, that's totally fine. But as you can see, I'm kind of pushing them up into the paint up into ridges and those ridges will form the most obvious cracks that we will then peel up later to create the um, open scabs. And just so you get a better idea of how this paint dries, I went ahead and added a big dollop just off to the right of the center there. So you'll see um, a nice big crack when that dries. And here is the dried Agrelin Earth with that big, large, cracked portion uh, that you see just to the right there. And what we're going to be doing now is making this look more fleshy rather than earthy. So we're going to use Cadian Flesh Tone. And all we're going to be doing is dry brushing it very thoroughly uh, over these cracks. In order to gain a little more color saturation while still dry brushing, I'm going to be using a makeup brush. This is an ELF eyeshadow brush. That's about the width of my thumbnail there. It can also be used for stippling if you want additional texture and color saturation in certain areas if you want to really build up that um, flesh tone. So pretty straightforward process. It's just dry brushing. Just a quick overview for some of our newer painters, make sure to use a dry palette, not a wet palette. <laughs> if you've been recommended a wet palette, don't use a wet palette for dry brushing. Uh, so get a little on your 
brush and wipe off most of it because otherwise you're going to get a nasty smear. Then just lightly flick the brush back and forth over the surface here and you'll see it start to catch on the raised portions. This will be a very subtle effect starting out as these are very similar tones, but as you can see it catches on the edges and creates a highlight. We're going to be building this color up and doing it again with a lighter flesh tone and this in turn will make the surface look more like dry skin rather than dry earth. And don't be afraid to really saturate a certain area if you want to bring focus to a particularly large crack. Uh, really dry brush that. You can stipple it, which is basically just jabbing <laughs> at it a little bit uh, with the tip of the brush. Um, and it will bring much more focus to a certain area. This, this was just a dry brush and you've got all that depth now with the deep red underneath, the lighter brown, and now the warmer flesh tone over top. This next step is another dry brush highlight, this time using Tyrant Skull, though any kind of dark ivory will work, so you shop the bone, flayed one flesh, maybe even Screaming Skull, that might be a little light, but basically anything with a yellowish tint to it because it's gonna give it a nice kind of sickly dried skin texture. And because I forgot to mention it before, I'm using an ELF concealer brush, it's another makeup brush um, that uh, provides additional color saturation, but gives you a little bit greater control as it's only about the width of your pinky nail. So as you can see, it's very good for just highlighting the most textured portions of this base. So that looks a bit more like dried skin. Now, what I'm going to do now, again, is optional. I'm just showing you what you can do with this look. I'm actually going to go in and accentuate some of the deepest cracks using Flesh Terror's Red. And all I'm going to do is just line it with a little bit of Flow Improver. And this can also be done with water. You're basically doing this just to make sure that red will flow easily within that confined space. And then just lightly touch the Flesh Terrors Red onto that Flow Improver. This will cause the Flesh Terrors Red to flow, hence the Flow Improver, and fill the crack. And if any of it overflows, that's totally fine. Just wipe it away with your finger. It'll make a little red tinge around the the reddest part anyway, so it'll create an equally natural look if some of it happens to spill over. Now we can really see that bloody undertone there. And this is without even doing the picked scab look, which we haven't even covered yet. Don't worry, it'll it'll it's super quick. So, really quick. Last optional step, we're going to use Make Us Purple. And what we're going to do is add some splotches of this and it'll create this kind of unhealthy, just kind of gross look over top of this ivory. When you put Magos Purple over any ivory, it makes this sickly skin tone. And there's really no particular technique to this. Just blotch it around and I try and focus it on where the um, lightest portions are. And then use your finger to kind of just dab away anywhere that looks a little too pink. Now this is the final look for the gross dried skin. Looks pretty nasty. If you want it to be nastier, we're going to actually be picking some of this up. Those big cracks there, we're going to be pulling it up so pools of the red will show through underneath, as you saw in the initial title photo. Now, obviously, if you plan on really having a lot of red, you don't need to do all that work on the skin. I just wanted to show you what the skin would look like if you didn't want a lot of red. So if you do want a lot of red, you can do take a pretty minimalist approach. Um, and then kind of adjust accordingly once you have your pools of blood now that you know what tones were used to make that skin color. So that being said, we're going to pull up some of this using a hobby knife. You can try and use tweezers, but in all honesty, you kind of end up gouging it uh, and scraping up more of the foundation than you should. Uh, as you can see here, of course, the one that I actually filmed pulls up some of the original foundation. You see those little black spots there. I have, don't, don't panic if this happens. There is something you can do to not only fix that, but improve the original red pool at the bottom. So just keep kind of picking at where you would like your pools of blood to be. Um, usually the biggest cracks are the easiest to pull up. I would not try and scrape off really small stuff because uh, then you end up with kind of an unrealistic pattern and run the risk again of like gouging that under layer instead of just pulling off the top cleanly. So if when you pull up the Agrellin Earth, some of the base layer comes away and shows the original foundation there or causes any kind of discoloration like this, don't sweat it. 
it doesn't matter at all because we're just going to end up painting over that anyway uh, in order to create the open wound effect. So all we're going to do is put a little bit of ivory. In this case, I'm using Screaming Skull. If you have black patches like this, it's just going to take a little heavier coating is all. You're, you're lightly blotting this anyway, so just, you know, do another layer over where any um, discoloration is. And make sure not to cover the entire surface in this ivory. You just want to blot the center and leave some of that pinkish, reddish tinge on the edges. All right, here we are at the final step. It's super easy. All you're going to do, once that ivory is completely dried, we're going to take the blood recipe that we started with. The two to one ratio of Flesh Terror's Red to Saigor Brown, and we're going to coat this open wound in that blood. And one thing you can do to give it a little bit more realism is while you work, while the paint is still very wet, uh, rinse your brush off, dip it in a little bit of the flow improver, and then you can wipe away the center as well as push some of the red towards the edges. This will give it uh, more of a, a realistic look. Basically, the edges should be darker and crustier looking. Um, you can also go in with Saigor brown and tinge the edges a bit that way if you want it even even crustier looking but you're basically just creating depth within a very shallow surface I did the same thing with the smaller portion here where I tinged the edges and then wiped away the center, but then I realized that smaller cuts usually close faster, so it would probably be best if I did them darker. So just food for thought, if you're working with smaller areas, it might look a bit better, a little more realistic if you make those dark, and then let the larger areas have that more fleshy, bloody tone. So here is the completed base with a plague bearer smiling atop it, looking right at home. So thank you very much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did and found it helpful and would like to support me as an artist as well as the channel, feel free to check out my Kofi link in the video description. Kofi is basically just a digital tip jar. It's not Patreon where you have to do a subscription. It's just a one and done show of appreciation. So thanks very much again for joining me. And until we meet again, happy painting, everyone.